anyone that is a kid, you got to lie going. Your biggest danger is if people you're lying to start talking to each other. If they start triangulating, well, wait a minute. They told me this. Here, really? They told you that because they told me this. See, that's why division, separating us so that we are six feet apart, so that we less and less communicate with each other. News organizations that have us fighting, I watch MSNBC and you watch Fox and our two worlds cannot come together. They don't want us to ever sit down at a meal and say, let's put all the politics aside for a second and let's just really talk about what world do we want to live in. Hey, Hilda here. I bring you experts, experiences, and epic adventures to boost your health. Today I have Dell Bigtree on the show. You guys, Dell is known for his kind of high wire act. He has a program where he passionately talks about our health and ways in which we can preserve it, maintain it, and make it go even bigger than before and stronger than ever. I like this conversation because Dell challenges the status quo. We talk a lot about our freedoms right now. He didn't have to take his whole show off of YouTube. It got pulled from YouTube because he was broaching controversial issues. And I'm thinking, what kind of world are we living in right now? So this is exactly the stuff that Dell and I talk about. Is censorship needed? Why are things being removed from our, from the public sphere and our conversations and what we can do about it? So check out our convo. Welcome to my channel. Thank you, thanks for having me, this is great. I'm so excited we're here in Kansas and it's about to be this big health freedom summit. Talk to my followers who are like, what are you, fighting for freedom for. I thought we were already in the land of the free. <laughs> I don't think any of your followers are thinking that right now. I don't think anyone feels like they're in the land of the free. Not to burst your bubble. So if you're there, good for you. But uh, I think we're living in a time where, you know, if, you'd have, if we'd have had this interview three or four years ago, that was the question. What is your problem, Dell? What is it that you're, you know, you seem really intense about health freedom and vaccinations, but we're fine, right? This moment right now is what I've been warning about years this is what I've been traveling the world and discussing if you you can see any interview I've done over the, especially the last year whether it was at Narcopoco or the truth about cancer or any of these places I've been standing on stages saying you need to wake up now I know that you think there's issues maybe with banking systems or Federal Reserve or any of these things that we get into but this vaccine issue is the biggest issue there is because it's going to challenge what we know to be true about our freedom, about our First Amendment rights, about our Constitution. Um, I've been saying, you know, the same line at the end of almost every talk. Farm is the most powerful lobby in Washington. It's outspending oil and gas two to one. We fight wars in the Middle East for the amount of money that is poured into our government every year by oil and gas. What do you think pharma is buying? And, and I said they are also buying every politician in every government in the world at the same rate. Something is up. And I have been saying for the last year, there is going to be a pandemic. There is going to be a takeover of the world by pharma and sort of the medical establishment. And, you know, two years ago that sounded crazy, but as it got closer and closer, people started saying, oh my God, and now it's happened. Here we are. This is not a surprise to me. And, you know, we were just talking to another news group that's open-minded, does a lot of alternative health stuff. And they said, we've been watching the high wire. You know, we started really waking up. One, this group also interviewed some of the same people I have. But like, but you were ahead of us. How did you know so early on that this pandemic wasn't going to pan out, that the numbers weren't going to be there, that this, this was being, you know, sort of manufactured? And I said, because I saw it coming before it happened. Because you were helping with that doctor show and they were telling you you couldn't have an episode about the opposite viewpoint on vaccines. Right. Because pharma, pharma was sponsoring, you know, the commercials and stuff. They were sponsoring Correct. the show, basically. Well, right. So I worked on the CBS Talks with the Doctors. I won an Emmy Award there. And one of the things you learn when you work in television is that you're not working for the people. It's not for the audience. It's for the sponsors that are selling the products at the commercial breaks. And for the doctors, that was Pfizer, Sanofi, Ventus, Merck. But I thought, in many ways, I thought I was just in this bubble on a medical talk show where, yeah, obviously our sponsors are, are you know, all pharmaceutical sponsors. But it was when I stumbled upon the story of the whistleblower at the CDC, Dr. William Thompson, that came forward and said, we're committing scientific fraud in vaccine safety studies. I pitched it to my executive producers. I wasn't shocked. And they're like, Dell, we are not going to attack the CDC. We're not going to destroy our ph pharmaceutical sponsors because some scientists are coming forward and saying, 
possibly committing fraud. But I didn't let off on that story. I, it was sort of, it, it was the beginning of the end of that career in television. Of course, they went on to make Vaxxed. But what I did find shocking is I thought, even though my show is not going to cover this, certainly when this whistleblower comes forward and the world hears what he's got to say, Fox and MSNBC and NBC, I mean, that'll be the biggest news story in the world. Well, when the story did break and it was online and it was happening and no one covered it, that's when I, I had a new realization that has then followed me forward, which is all of television is owned by Fox. It's not just the show I was working on. It was everything. Every show, whether it's, you know, uh, a, a daytime soap opera or a, a, a primetime evening event or news. Just watch your commercials. I was going to say, does that explain why every news piece around winter is like flu season is coming and they show the little reporter going and getting her shot? Like, is that why it's always so positive about these are the things we need to do to take care of our health and they usually have to do with pharmaceutical drugs? Right. Well, just, just watch your commercials. That's all I can say. You want to... You want to wake up today, just if you're a TV watcher, first of all, I would love it if you just throw that thing in the garbage because what you have is a billboard in your house for pharma. And it is, it is giving you a mantra on a constant basis that you can only stay alive because of pharma. That's what it's telling you all the time. But if you don't believe me, just count the amount of commercials that pharma has in the shows that you watch. Is it 50% of the commercials? Is it 25%? I guarantee you, you will not have a commercial break that you won't see a pharmaceutical product. Remember that aspirin, that drug, that cold medication, that, that baby powder, that, you know, all of these things are being made by these companies. And so you really have to look at that, but it's getting worse. Now, if you really start paying attention, more than just the happy-go-lucky flu shot commercial, you're going to see that the show you're watching has a flu outbreak and that it's being stopped by, you know, a vaccine. Or you're starting to see them weave into their, yeah. their programming right is that's now becoming a commercial and so what most people don't understand when you work in television here's what you know that what you're doing really is not the most important thing it doesn't matter if you're on the biggest show there is everyone knows when you work in television you are just trying to keep people looking at that billboard so that they're still there for that commercial break that advertising you are killing time till the next ad and the better you kill that time, the more you keep people engaged, the more that ad makes and the more that ad sells. But it is all about advertising. That's all a television is for. Well, and maybe that's the reason they call it entertainment. They're entertaining you. They're keeping you right. for a purpose is what you're They're saying. They're containing you in front of that television so that the message by the advertisers can get to you. And that's, that's very problematic. It's really, it is, I think, the most dangerous thing in the world today, and especially in the United States of America. We talk a lot behind the scenes about this is television is the news i think we live in a really scary time in america i've never seen propaganda at a level you know i've, I've read about propaganda in nazi germany in russia in china that doesn't have anything on the propaganda we're really good at it here we are the best propaganda makers there are our commercials can move you emotionally. We can make you change your mind. We can brainwash you into believing what we want you to believe simply by colors and music and movement and thoughts and ideas. And so now we live in a time where there's no such thing as news. There's not a single news agency that I've seen that's telling the full truth about this pandemic because I'm a, I'm a reporter. I'm telling you, <laughs> you watch The High Wire, you're saying, why am I not getting this information anywhere else? Because I don't have sponsors. That's the only difference. It's not that these people are dark or evil. No. There's a million reporters out there that would love to be able to do what I'm doing. They know what the story is, but they can't because of who pays their, their, their check. And so we live at a time now where in America, we believe what we're watching on the television is news. You talk to someone in France, they're like, we're not wearing masks here. This isn't, we don't have a pandemic the way you have. And you're like, what are you talking about? We're in a bubble now where we are being told how the world is acting, and some of it's not true. And Del, I don't like the world that's being created around us. In other words, I see people taking a wide swath when they're walking past me, and I'm like, why are they afraid of me? Do you know what I mean? I think there's a sense of fear and anxiety, and, and I guess it's purposeful, from what you're saying, if pharmaceutical companies are simply wanting to push their vaccines on us. If you're lying to me, just take it on a small level. For those, anyone that is a kid, you got to lie going. Your biggest danger is if people you're lying to start talking to each other. If they start triangulating, well, wait a minute, 
they told me this here really he told you that because they told me this see that's why division separating us so that we are six feet apart so that we less and less communicate with each other news organizations that have us fighting i watch msnbc and you watch fox and our two worlds cannot come together they don't want us to ever sit down at a meal and say let's put all the politics aside for a second and let's just really talk about what world do we want to live in and and what would it take to live in that world and I've done this with friends that are on the other side of, of the discussion. And I say, you know, and it's hard. Yeah. You want to go to the blame thing, right? We're taught, well, it's, it's, it's Biden or it's Trump or it's this, that's it. <laughs> no, no, take all that out of it. Right. Take all of the entities out and just see what is it we want in the world? What does freedom look like? Where should our food come from? How are ranchers being treated? How is, you know, what is the process of, of farming? Where is my water coming from? How do I want my water to, what do I want in it? You know, if we went to those things and forget about who's in charge of these things, we recognize that we agree on about 90% of the issues in our country and in this world. And if we came to that realization, we would stop screaming at each other, which is just, is we're just, you know, screaming through the bullet points that are being handed to us with no depth. And the reason we're screaming is we don't have any information. We really can't hold a discussion for longer than four sentences because we run out of the bullet points our news agency handed us and we got nothing left. Uh -huh. So that's what they don't want. And, then, and if there's one thing that I would say we need to change, we need to start talking again. It's really that simple. We need to get away from this place of being politically correct, where you're not allowed to have that conversation. It's Thanksgiving, can we not bring up religion? Can we not bring up <laughs> politics? That thought system is what has killed our constitutional rights in America. We have walked away from them by not celebrating them in our conversations with each other. Oh, we're not willing to tolerate a different point of view. That's right. Or to consider it, to right? To consider That's it. That's why I don't yeah. like, what I don't like what I've seen in the media a lot is labeling. Like this person, oh, they're the conspiracy theorist or, or they're the ones that believe that and like, boom, they're gone. They're crazy. And it's like, why couldn't we actually ask a question? And why is that conspiracy theorist to ask a question? I wish we were in a place we could ask questions. We have got to be in place, or we don't have freedom, and we certainly are not, we're not even thinking, our brains aren't working anymore. We've got to be able to challenge each other, you know, and that's what, that's the joy of conversation. Sitting around and agreeing with each other is boring. <laughs> Learning something from someone else's point of view, maybe challenging yourself, that is, that's really the great, at least for me, that's the greatest thing that can happen. Uh, we have lost the ability to have the conversation, and again, that's all a part of the plan, right? Our news not only gives us the dilemma it wants us to be focused on, it gives us the parameters with which we're allowed to talk about it. So it's controlling every part of the conversation. You know, we have a race, you know, war essentially going on in America, but as a, you know, as a white male, you know, I'm not even allowed to be a part of the conversation. So I'm so privileged now that my voice is not allowed in this conversation. We've got to let the rest of the people talk. Those types of things, setting up how we're going to have a conversation, vaccinations, anybody that questions a vaccine, anyone that wants to skip giving a hepatitis B vaccine to their day one old baby, you know, inside of the first 24 hours, gasping for their first breath, you're holding that baby and saying, I don't think I want to inject a sexually transmitted disease in my baby today. You are now an anti-vaxxer. You are danger to your child and everyone the around label. you. The yeah. label. And so that's by design. That's what keeps us divided, and, and that's what we, and you look at the universities now across America, you see students that say free speech is only allowed if what, you know, as long as I agree with what you're saying. <laughs> that if you hurt my feelings, that speech shouldn't be free. Um, that's terrifying. That's really terrifying that we find ourselves in that position because uh, truth hurts sometimes. And, and sometimes so do lies. But you got to be able to call it out. I mean, the idea that we live in a time where Twitter is saying we are going to censor tweets by the president of the United States, I think, I thought you said he was a liar. If he is a liar, shouldn't we see those tweets? I've always wondered that. Shouldn't we that. have them on record? Shouldn't I be able to challenge those statements? Yeah. You're going to hide them from the public? Then like, how do we fix the problem? It's like you're treating us as if we were infants, including like when I got in the elevator at the hotel here and there was like a thing saying, you know, rider one here, rider two here. And I was like, wait, I'm not five years old that I need to be told where to stand, you know? And is, does it make me a bad person or a conspiracy theorist to ask a question about the whole social distancing thing? I actually, as a health coach, don't think that's good for our health right. to be so separate from each other. 
My, my favorite meme out there right now is a picture of somebody who's got the mask on, they've got a shield, they basically got like a, you know, a hazmat suit <laughs> on, and it says, and this person is calling me a tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorist. Yes! Oh my <laughs> so, God. You know, that, that's the world we live in. <laughs> that's the sane person. Right, the person that is terrified of the air we breathe on this planet, and I'm crazy because I think I think we're okay here. I think we can sit out here. I think I can breathe this air. I think my immune system. In fact, I know my immune system can handle it because the science is showing us that for 80% of us, I'm not even gonna have symptoms. I mean, this is the weakest virus we've ever seen. 80% of us only know we have it if we get a test. You've never seen a virus that mild. Now let's. You know, there is that 0.26%. They're having an acute reaction, and we should figure out how to help those people. But the truth is, is most of them are dying right now before COVID-19. That's their, that's their other issue. Their other issue is they're dying of heart disease. They're already they're, dying. They're already in the process of dying. They're dying from cancer. They're dying from heart disease. They're dying from hypertension and COPD. And so, under those circumstances, every cold is deadly. And that's what this is. It's a deadly cold for those who are already in a position to be at risk. Once the body cannot stop a common cold, your days are numbered. I'm, it's just the way it is. It's, it's, that is what life is. And now, all of a sudden, we're all being told that I have to change my life. And my kids have got... I just. Really honestly, just yesterday, a friend was visiting. We have a lot of people coming through our house in Texas from California to look at real estate <laughs> and are you know moving out because of what's happening there. Yeah. But a friend of mine's baby had a, um, a bacteria infection on her face, and you know what? It's the fourth face infection I've seen on a small child in the last month. All of these kids are wearing masks, which is making them touch themselves. They're getting MRSA and staph infections on the face. It's really scary. I haven't seen that. I mean, I honestly have not seen a kid no, with a bacteria either. infection on in their face. I've seen four in the last month. And then what's happening is they're breathing in, you know, the bacteria and stuff that's collecting their mask with their dirty hands because they're touching their face more. All of these things, it's crazy. It's really crazy. And all of this because this tiny group of people that are already near or on their deathbed are not able to handle this coronavirus. It doesn't make sense. And, you know, they, they can say that I'm heartless. How can you say that? Every life matters. Every life does Absolutely. matter. But you know what is a part of life? Death is a part of life. I know. We need to accept it. Mean, it really is what's, what's really messing up our society is our fear of death. It happens. Uh -huh. uh, it especially happens when you eat really bad food right. and pesticides and you drink a lot of alcohol and you smoke cigarettes and you find yourself with COPD or emphysema or heart disease. I'm not saying that everybody comes from lifestyle, but mostly, mostly, you know, and, and when people, I mean, probably saying more than I should, but honestly, I'm being told right now that I have got, that somebody else's health is my problem. That if I don't wear a mask, I'm putting these people who have heart disease and COPD and these things at risk. And that it's my responsibility, their health is my responsibility to keep them healthy. And I say, okay, hold on a second. <laughs> hold on a second. First of all, I don't believe that's true. Right. I believe in a free country and it is not my job to keep you healthy. But let's be clear. If you're going to make it my job, it doesn't start now that you have heart disease and you want me to wear a mask. I'm not wearing this thing. You know where I'm going to get involved? I want laws that stand outside of grocery stores. I want to see your your, your grocery cart come out of the grocery store. Or do you have Dr. Pepper and Coca-Cola and Doritos and all of this synthetic food? Are you going to feed your kids that? I want that to be illegal. I want to make sure that you can't treat your body the way you have so that you end up with COPD by the time you're 65 years old. If you're really or diabetes. in charge of their If you health. really want yeah. me in charge, trust me, I'm ready to get in charge. I'm ready to take away your freedoms, but we're going to make you healthy. Your health is my responsibility. I'm going to make sure you live to be 99 years old. Mm -hmm. But that's not the country I want to live in, and I don't think it's the country you want to live in no, either. No, no, so no. why don't we let everybody live their lives? You said, and how many friends do we have that say, I drink, but I love my life now. I smoke cigarettes. I get it. I won't live as long, but I enjoy my life now. I'm living the moment. Good for you. Yeah. Great. Yeah, yeah. That is your choice. Others, I have other friends that run marathons that, you know, watch every single gram of food that goes in their body, where their water comes from. They're extreme on both sides. And guess what? 
this is a free country. But if you're living with that attitude that I don't care about how long I live, it's about the quality of my life, fine. But now that that's backfiring on you, you don't get to change my life. Right. You don't get to wait and tell me how I have to be healthy or how I have to live my life to protect you. And that's, I think, the problem of what's going on here. It is falling apart. I think people have had it. So everyone's cheating the mask. If you're wearing your mask, your nose hanging out, then all you're saying is, I am simply a slave. Right. I'm a slave to a system I don't believe in, and I'm trying to get by by looking like I'm doing this thing. But if this was Ebola, I guarantee you, you would be seeing people duct taping that mask to their face. <laughs> right. Let's be honest. Right. You really don't think this is a deadly virus because if you do and you think that mask is actually protecting you, then you're really dumber than I thought. You know what makes me laugh <laughs> is when I walk by people, I'm not wearing a mask. They pull theirs up and then like later they pull it down. I'm just thinking you're touching everything. Oh. If you think there's something coming at you, you just touched it and you just touched it again. Do you know what I mean? I keep <laughs> trying to figure out a, a, a politically correct way to do a commercial. I want to do a commercial where people are going in and out of a restaurant, but they put their underwear on going into the restaurant. Then when they get to the table, they pull their underwear off and they lay it on the table. And then when they go to leave the restaurant, they put their underwear yeah, back exactly. on. And then when they get to the car, they take their underwear off and they hang it on the mirror. <laughs> and then when they get to the next place, they take the underwear and they put it back on and say, those hands that have touched your underwear 20 times today are touching the grapefruits I'm about to buy, the door handle that I'm walking into, yes. because that's what we're doing. This is one of the places we eliminate our toxins. Yes, okay, yes. this hole is just as toxic as the other holes on our body. <laughs> and every time you're touching this, you might as well be grabbing your underwear. Don't tell me that, mm -hmm. now look, if we wore masks the way doctors do, which means we have rubber gloves on and a mask that we never touch, and the moment we do, we throw it into a hazmat garbage can, you might argue to me then yes. that that mask hat might be able to slow the spread if that's what you want. But you can't tell me the way I see the world wearing masks that this is doing anything except spreading this infection faster. And just giving the impression that we, we need to be compliant to whatever is coming down on us when in fact our hearts or our intuition or our facts are telling us otherwise, you know? Absolutely. And, and speak, it is all about compliance because it was really about health. Every PSA would be saying exactly what I just said. Here's how you wear a mask. Here's how you fit a mask. Don't ever touch the mask. Once you have, please discard it. There's no PSA on my television that's telling me how to wear a mask. Where are the hazmat garbage cans anywhere so that when I throw away this toxic mask, if, if this is a deadly virus that's now collected in this mask, where do I put it? You see these things laying around on the ground in parks. It's like hypodermic needles everywhere. <laughs> Nobody cares. This isn't about health. Right. And if it were about health, to quote my friend Joel Salatin, like they'd be having PSAs about get outside, get fresh air, exactly eat real right. good food. That's what it would be about. And what are they saying now? Wasn't it amazing? Now they're saying we better look out for the winter because now we're all going to be stuck in our homes. We won't be out getting fresh air and the sunshine. <laughs> so this virus is going to spread. It's like, wait a minute. You didn't let us out in the sunshine yeah. all summer long, and now you're telling us the reason that the winter is going to be dangerous is that we won't be out in the sun? So you knew this the whole time. I mean, people would just wake up, right. right, and say, this doesn't make sense. And so I hope that's the biggest takeaway of our interview just now is ask questions. Please. And listen to your intuition. That's it. If there was one more question that they should ask, Del, what, where should they start? What's a good question they might ask themselves or ask the status quo? Hmm. That's hard. My, my life is built on questions. I'm constantly in a quest to answer a million questions going on. But I think uh, the question they should ask themselves is, am I property of the government? Whether, you know, because I know people around the world are going to be watching this video, but let's talk about the United States of America. Am I property or am I a free walking citizen in this country? Because the answer to that question determines how you see this entire conversation. Because if the government can inject you with a product you have no control over and inject your children, you are now not even a slave, you're a farm animal. You have lost the ability to say, I can read, I can do my own investigations, and I can make choices about what I eat, what I drink, what my children eat, what they drink, what they wear, how they live, whether they ski, whether they ride bicycles, whether they you know, wear helmets. Those are all my choices. If we give up the choice and the ability to choose the most important thing, toxic chemicals, they are toxic. They can say they're in tiny amounts, but these are toxic, known toxic elements can be injected to us without 
our consent. Thanks for watching, you guys. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of our conversation. Let me know if you have suggestions for future guests and click on that notification bell so you can be alerted every time I post a new video. And subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Love you lots y hasta pronto.